Hello, YouTube. Okay, we're back for another episode. My name is Sam, and we will be studying uh, mathematics today using Mathematica. So today what we're going to do is look at limits, and I'll open up this file. So we're going to consider the limit of a function as x goes to 1, and then we're going to have a look at sequences and consider these in Mathematica. Okay, so let's get started. All right, I'll open up a new notebook and I'll move it over here. Now I'm going to need to magnify the window. Magnification 300. Okay, let's begin. Now we're asked to plot the following functions near one. So let's just do this one for now. Okay, but first of all, let's consider well, let's write it down. We've got x to the power of 1,000, minus 1. And we have a numerator of x minus 1. Okay, so now we're going to plot this function of one variable as x goes from say minus 2 to 2. All right, shift and enter and see what we get. Now look, on the scale you see some very big numbers. Okay, so what we want to do to um, plot this in a shorter range is we'll just write plot range and then let's choose a range. So say minus 2 to 2, and we'll see what this looks like now. Okay, so what we have now is a, um, we have the curve, the curve plotted within a range of minus 2 to 2, and we have plotted uh, the, the x part of this between minus 2 and 2 also. Right, so that is that part done. Now, this is an exercise in uh, limits. Okay, so let's consider what happens as x, well, when x equals 1. When x equals 1, look, we have a zero denominator, right? This function. So there's a hole in this function when x is equal to 1. All right, but when you take a limit, you're looking at what happens near this number x equals 1. Okay, so now to consider the limit, you would want to factorize the numerator and cancel the x plus 1 from the numerator and the denominator because x to the power of 1000 minus 1 has a factor of x minus 1 within it. So let's just consider factorizing. Okay, so to do that, we can simply write factor. Okay, now this could take a little while. Yes, it takes a little while. Okay, let's have a look. Now, we have factorized this expression and, and, and canceled out the x minus 1. So now we have a polynomial um, in x with several factors. Okay, so these are irreducible factors over the real numbers. And uh, so when we take the limit as x goes to 1, we simply um, replace 1 into this function. So we go replace all. x goes to 1. Okay, shift and enter. What's happened? Oh, I've misspelled replace. Okay, so replace. And it's a thousand. Okay, so then we can write that in comment form. We'll write that limit of f of x as x approaches 1 is equal to 1,000. Okay, so basically you want to cancel out uh, the, the 
term, uh, sorry, the factor that that causes a zero denominator, and then you want to s substitute in the the number that you're taking the limit as x goes towards. Okay, now something similar happens with this function g as x goes to two. All right, so when you substitute in x equals 2 into this expression, we have 3 minus 2 equals 1, and the positive square root of that is equal to 1, and then 1 minus 1 is 0, right? So that would give a 0 denominator. So let's input the value of this function. So we have sqrt 6 minus x and then subtract 2. So this is the numerator of g and then the denominator is the square root 3 minus x and then from that we subtract 1. Right, shift and enter and then it will output it in, in a way that looks more like this. Okay so now that we have that Let's see what happens if we substitute in the value x equals 2. Okay, so we're replacing x with 2. Let's have a look. It says power infinite expression 1 on 0 encountered. Okay, so that means we have a 0 denominator, which is not allowed in this context. This is not a real number. Okay, now that we understand that, um, well, if we are to take the limit as x approaches 2, what we would do is we would want to uh, express this in a slightly different way. Okay, so let's do that. Now, what you normally do is is you um, will, in this case, multiply the numerator and denominator by a number, sorry, by um, the conjugate of this denominator. All right, so let's get that in this way first, and then we will multiply by a fraction, and then I'll copy this denominator copy it there and I'll change the sign of this to a minus so that I get the conjugate. Do the same in the denominator. All right now if I press shift and enter well we just have the same thing there right which is not very helpful. So what we want to do is uh, expand Well, we really want to expand the numerator. So I'll put this down there with the denominator. And I'll put this up with the numerator. Brackets around this. And then we want to actually expand the numerator and denominator. Okay, now that we have that, let's shift and enter. And now you can see what we have is something different. We have, um, we have a rational denominator in this case, okay? And now what we might want to do is see whether or not we can now factor, factorize the numerator. I'll put factor for the numerator. And now this is looking a little bit better, okay? So I've cancelled, not cancelled, I, I have um, multiplied by the, the conjugate function of the denominator which rationalizes the denominator in this case. And so now, um, now we still have an x minus 2 in the denominator. Okay, so we still have a two, uh, x minus 2 in the denominator. Right, which when we substitute in x equals 2, 
into this denominator, we will still have a zero denominator. Now, what happens in the numerator is when we substitute in x equals 2, we get a 4 right here. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. All right, so we want to now work with this factor. So I'll copy it, press enter here, and what I want to do is multiply by the conjugate of this factor right here. So I'll put it in there. We'll change this sign to minus, paste it down here, change to minus. So all we're doing is multiplying by 1. Okay, so let's expand the numerator. Shift enter. All right, so there we have an expanded numerator. The denominator is unchanged. And now let's factorize the whole thing. So I'll write factor. Shift enter and see what we have. All right, so by um, multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same thing, we can have, we can get a new, um, a new function which has the same value near x equals two as the original function g. Okay, now that we have that, let's now substitute in x equals two. So I'll write replace all x goes to 2. Shift enter. And now what we have is 1 half. All right, so what we have deduced is that the limit, so limit of the function g of x as x approaches 2 is equal to 1 half. Okay, so that's that one done. And let's move on and consider the next question here, which is about terms of a sequence. Okay, so let's consider this first one. Determine the first 20 terms of the following sequence and use a list plot to plot the terms. Okay, so let's do this now. We have subscripts, all right? So let's open up the palette. Palettes basic math assistant. And what I'm looking for here is the subscript. So I'm um, move this over so you can see. Okay, so this is the one I want right here. I'll press this. Now I can close the basic math assistant palette and I'll put in D1 and I'll set this equal to one, the semicolon. And now I can, uh, copy this format so copy paste and i'll change the one to an n okay dn equals four minus down here i'll put d subscript n minus one now i want to tabulate this to form a list of the terms of the sequence okay so n should begin with Two in this case because when I substitute in 2 this subscript will be 2 minus 1 is 1 and it will call on this value right here okay and let's go to 20 as instructed now shift and enter and see what we get okay 3 1 3 1 3 1 3 1 3 1 and so on so these uh, are recurring every two terms. Okay, so let's now consider the next um, sequence. Well, that looks just the same. Okay, so in this case, we will just go up here and change the first term to two, press shift and enter, see how that changes. Now in this case, every term is equal to two. And that's not surprising because if we sub in two right here, four minus two is two, Repeat, repeat, and in each case, we will end up with the number two. Okay, so that is an easy way to um, get terms of a sequence in Mathematica. All right, let's come down and look at the next problem.
Okay, so let's do this first one. Now that says natural log. All right, so we have a sequence that uh, takes the natural log. So I'll write log. And I don't need to say that I want to take that to base E because that's what is naturally uh, built into Mathematica. So I can just put N there. Okay, and then we subtract uh, 3N plus 2. All right, now this is AN. So I'll come up here and copy Control C. I'll change that to an A. Then I'll put equals here. It says compute the first 10 terms of the sequence. All right, but we don't have a first term. So let's come up here and say A1. And because we're not told, let's just choose one. The number two, for example. Okay, and then if we're um, tabulating or listing the first 10 terms of the sequence, then we'll write table. And let's consider, well, this is a sequence where we might consider the first term as, as A1. So we'll tabulate this from N equals one to 10. Okay, shift enter. And then we have several differences of logs. All right, several differences of natural logs. Now it mentions using the uppercase N here where appropriate. Okay, so we might want to consider the numerical values of this. And if we did, we would just put a capital N around this, and then we'll get numerical values of that. Okay, but if you want more precision, you can do that by just specifying, say you want 20 decimal places, okay? And then you get 20 decimal places or more. Okay, so let's just do the next one and uh, we'll call it a session. So to do the next one, I'll just replace the expression with 1 plus 2 over n, and then that is raised to the power of n. All right, so whoops, that was a 2, wasn't it? Okay, 2. Okay, so the first term is 3, the next one is 4. When we began with 2, and then uh, we go on and on and on. And these seem to look like they are converging, but let's find out by taking this a bit farther. Okay, let's go to 100, see what we get. All right, so maybe they're not converging. Okay, but this is just a numerical um, exercise in taking limits, so we won't even ponder whether or not that's converging. All right, let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so we've got several more here. I think I'll leave those to you to do, and I'll see you in the next session. All right, thank you. Bye for now.